So I'm delighted to welcome today Sabina Fury, who is uh, a yoga teacher. Hi, Sabina. And we thought we'd theme this um, interview. If you can't go outside, learn how to go inside, which is obviously very topical. Um, so quick introduction first, because um, we met in very unusual circumstances. Uh, and um, what happened was last Christmas, I was looking for a, a little bit of a different present for my dear wife. And I thought, something around well-being might be good and uh, anyway cut long story short i came across uh, sabina's website and I th and i saw that she does a gift voucher and i thought yeah great brilliant and we had a quick chat and i thought yes uh you know this this would be really good but i had no idea where that was going to lead and how that would also shape my thinking about um uh, the world of yoga so I've not had much to do with it and meditation and all the sort of stuff we're going to talk through today which is obviously integral in these challenging times. So over to you Sabine if you'd like to do a quick intro and, and um, just explain how you got into yoga and became a teacher. All right awesome thank you for having me first thank you um, for allowing me to share the gift of yoga. Um, it's really exciting. I'm really passionate about it, obviously, because I teach it. <laughs> so um, my name is Sabina and I have been teaching about four years now and I'm practicing for about eight. Or, I don't know. I don't do time, really. It's been a long time. Let's put it that way. Um, and I got into yoga when I was like really down and depressed. I did not lead a healthy lifestyle. Um, I was taking drugs as well, not addicted, but still like, you know, very unhealthy lifestyle, eating junk food, not exercising. It was just terrible, pretty much. Probably like <laughs> and, a lot of people are doing at the moment in lockdown. Yeah. Yep, <laughs> yep. Yeah, I know everybody's like on their booze, aren't they? <laughs> like, dude, don't do it. This is like asking for alcoholism. <laughs> and um, yeah, so. As you can imagine, I was really unhealthy and that um, affected my mental well-being as well. And I was very depressed for, uh, on medication as well for quite a number of years. And I was so lucky that my doctor actually said, why don't you try yoga? And I'm like, okay, I've got nothing to lose. Why not? And I'm not kidding. Even after the first class, just one class made such a huge difference in my mental well-being. I'm like hooked. <laughs> And yeah, so I've been practicing myself because I didn't have much money as well. So I practice at home, um, uh, just on YouTube videos and stuff like that. And it's just like pretty much working on myself. And uh, one day my friend was really distressed and she came over to see me and she couldn't even talk how upset she was. I'm like, you know what? Don't tell me what's wrong. Let's just do a little bit of yoga together. And then you can tell me. I'm not kidding. Eight minutes. That's all we did. She calmed down so much and could tell me what was wrong and like we worked on it and she's like wow you should be a yoga teacher and i'm like mm -hmm. i would actually like that <laughs> and that was the start of it and yeah i went into it because i really wanted to it helped me so much mm. um funny how these things happen isn't it yeah and if you believe things happen for yeah. a reason that was clearly oh, meant totally to be. it was so meant to be mm. i would have thought of it becoming a yoga teacher but like i absolutely adore sherry whatever i've been through you know because I, i'm helping people and i'm having so much fun doing that i adore my job <laughs> mm. and you've gone from one extreme now to the other haven't you because you're oh totally i don't even drink anymore <laughs> i'm like such a health freak you know um i went vegan as well and trying you know and you can be an unhealthy vegan as well and eat junk food but every now and then it's okay but like 95% of my diet is super healthy, unprocessed foods. You know, my only vice is still coffee. I love coffee. <laughs> one a day, one. One a day. <laughs> I yeah, could have so, something bad. <laughs> so you're embracing the whole sort of um, well being lifestyle, essentially, aren't you? Yeah, definitely. It just happened naturally with me, though. Like the more yoga I did, the less um, harmful things for my body I really wanted to do. I used to smoke as well and just like drop that effortless 
before I was trying to you know, quit for years and it just didn't happen. I always started again. But like the more yoga I did, I was just like one day I was just thinking, I'm like, what am I doing? This is disgusting. Like, why am I doing this to my body? I love my body. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let's look after it. <laughs> So it's, it's a fascinating journey. Thank you. And, and tell me, <clears throat> uh, one of the things I was particularly interested in when I found your website, um, uh, I mean, I don't know much about yoga. I mean, I, I used to do yoga years ago when I was very young and I, I did Hatha yoga, but mm-hmm. obviously there are loads of different types of yoga. What, what made you particularly gravitate to Drew yoga? Mm. There's so many different types and they're all, wonderful seriously like it's like the different kind of exercise right we are all so individual and different so whatever works for me might not necessarily work for you and vice versa so like i would say try out all of the styles if you can and see which one works for you the most because they all have their wonderful benefits i i was um i i fell in love with drew because um i just find it so wonderfully adaptive as well to everybody's needs because for example for for vinyasa flow it's again amazing workout it's it's a lot about the physical as well it's about other aspects as well but like it's, it's very physical and not everybody can do that it's not just so accessible for just general audience and with drew there is just taught in such a lovely way that there is adaptations for absolutely everybody no matter what fitness level you are, no matter how flexible you are, or if you have any injuries, there's always an option. And that's what I really love the most, that it's accessible to right. everybody. And, and, just and you know, obviously I know from your classes how well you adapt to uh, your, um, uh, your style on, on the person's uh, physical uh, capabilities to to the different um, exercises anyway um, but mm. that's obviously very important because um, um, you know one of the things I, I've come across and I'm sure you come across it all the time Sabine is there are lots of myths about yoga aren't there oh yeah so many <laughs> um, let, let, let's see if we can banish some of these um, dreaded myths well what is yeah. the most um, well the big one is, isn't it? Oh, I'm not flexible enough, so I can't do yoga. You do yoga to become flexible. I literally, <laughs> when I first started yoga, I couldn't bend like further than my knees. My, I was so inflexible. Now I can like put my full hands on the floor in forward bend. Okay. <laughs> so it's just like, you really do not need to be flexible whatsoever. You build up the flexibility. You yeah. build up the strength as well. Or if people say, um, you know, um, I don't have energy, for example, somebody who's uh, struggling with uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, you start with lots of relaxation. There's things which you can't do, you can visualize. I literally uh, read an amazing story about a woman which was in, in a wheelchair and she was so determined to do yoga. So she went to every single class, visualized the movements which she couldn't do. Now she's a yoga teacher oh wow That's it's just incredible. like amazing yeah i mean I, I one of the reasons that i i do the yoga is because i i play tennis and um when you get to my age you you, you need all the flexibility you can have. <laughs> so I, yeah. I i find it's massively beneficial to to me um but what other myths that you come across in terms of yoga uh, Sabina? um as well like for example that, that covers meditation as well, mainly. Um, that uh, all my mind is too busy, I can't sit down to meditate. We all have a monkey mind, again, that uh, improves with practice. And also, even now, you know, I've practiced meditation and yoga for a while, and I still have days when it just doesn't shut up. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's okay. Um, it's just about being able to, be compassionate towards yourself and give yourself a break when you do have those days to have that awareness okay today and not judge it you know today my mind is just busy i've got lots to do but i'm going to try anyway yeah i'm going to just do it and what about the 
the whole sort of crossover between yoga and medica meditation. Um, I, I mean, I think from my experience, again, Sabina, some people have put off yoga by the thought of meditating all a bit woo-woo, you know. Um, yeah. You know, the importance of meditation, especially in these challenging times, in terms of calming yourself and, and getting yourself in a, in a, you know, in a good state so that you can tackle all the different challenges that are uh, going on at the moment. Um, but what do you, what do you tend to find is, is the, the thing that puts people off meditation the most, Sabina? Um, a myth probably. I have like so many things like if I blah blah and by the way feel free to stop me because I can go on for hours. <laughs> <laughs> so first of all I think you, meditation is part of yoga. You do yoga to strengthen your body so you can sit still in meditation and to calm it to get the energy move flowing through the body. So ideally you want to do some yoga, some breathing and relaxation and then you go to meditation so you can get it into a deeper state. Of course, not everybody has the time to do it. And um, yeah, I think what puts off people most as well is the sitting, you know, and steady and like for long periods of time. Uh, you don't have to do that. It's even if you start with two minutes of just observing your breath and then build up on it. You can do it little by little, you know, don't give yourself a huge task. Like if you've never meditated before, and you sit sit down for half an hour, you're setting yourself for failure. <laughs> yeah, sure. You know, so baby steps are really important just to build up um, to it. Start with two minutes. Next day, set a timer for three minutes or five. See how it goes. Just do it so it's enjoyable, and not that okay. I have to do this. How about again changing the mindset about it is really helpful as well. I'm doing this for my health, for learning about myself, yeah. for observing my thoughts, not, oh, I have to do this because this is good for me. Can you see the difference? I have a little bit of resentment there. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going to have to sit for 15 minutes, you know, but it's good for me, so I've got to do it. But how about, I love myself and I do this for my well-being. This is going to be lovely for me. So let's do that. Let's be kind to myself. I mean, you know, the classes that I attend, they're, they're an hour and a quarter, but is there a sort of an optimum time of a yoga session? Yeah, I find that an hour and 15 minutes is, is pretty good for yoga. So you can fit quite a good um, uh, relaxation at the end as well. That's really important. I find that one hour is a little bit fast for me. It's doable. You still get a great workout and, and relaxation, but hour and 15 um, it is fab. I think I find like hour and a half tends to be too long for some people. I personally love it, but again, it's about preference. So it's a balance. It's middle way. Right. <laughs> but it's a balance of the, basically the exercises, the breathing and the relaxation and meditation really, isn't it? Mm. That's interesting yeah. because, um, you know, I, I've been going to body balance classes for many years, which obviously aren't running at the moment, but, um, and right at the end, they do relaxation. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, and, and it's always bugged me that, um, the, the, um, instructor, as they call them, um, they, they always say, right, now we're going to do relaxation, but if you want to go, then mm -hmm. you're very welcome, but please, go leave, please leave quietly and I think mm. well surely the whole idea of this is to do the exercise and then to relax and calm yourself before yeah. you leave and I, I just find that incredible and I'm sure people's mindsets would have changed radically with what's been going on obviously this year and it'd be interesting when those classes do start again whether people actually do, the majority do stay for the relaxation at mm. the end and actually do want to get that, that calmness. I have to say, I think relaxation is the most important part of the class. Because, you know, you work your body, you get energy moving, you want the energy to settle down and like, you know, get yourself in a lovely relaxed state. Because when you're in a relaxed state, your body can heal better. 
yeah and they'll love yeah. the muscles and everything and you know it calms the mind as well it's just such an important part but people are so busy all the time people don't know how to relax it's very hard well, i think that's the still. whole issue isn't it sabine that people mm. don't know how to relax and i i almost felt or feel they were worried about having to relax you know yeah, i don't want to face do. that you know i've got too much to do so i i'm off i'm out mm. of it um they whereas do. you know i've come to learn the importance of that and um it's interesting because i know we talk about moving energy which i talk about in coaching as well um and what i've come to learn from your classes in yoga is um that you actually get energized whereas i think a lot of people don't expect that from yoga do they yeah is that it's another myth literally um uh, i don't know if i would call it a myth but um yeah people just don't people think that it's just the physical you know they they focus on the physical of people but it's so much more than that it goes it works on your subtle energetic body as well and on your mind and your emotions as well as the physical so you know you strengthen your muscles you um stretch and um you you create a body uh, you know balance as well physical balance but the physical balance like blends into the mental balance as well it really those two are linked and yeah it's just wonderful no, it's a meeting of, all aspects of your being it's a meeting of body and mind basically yeah yeah definitely. well on that on that point um and I, I i you know i come across this all the time there's this um um confusion probably the right word between yoga and mindfulness so sabina you 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 tell me <laughs> for the benefit of the audience oh that's going to push somebody's buttons thoughts about yoga versus mindfulness are they different or are they one and the same thing it's part of the same thing again it's mindfulness meditation people just call it mindfulness again to make it available for the you know normal people who are not all into that hippie thing you know <laughs> so i think it's just like a marketing platform mindfulness yoga is mindfulness it's teaching you how to be present in your body and in your mind and that's what mindfulness is to be in the present moment and notice and get to know yourself how you react in certain situations what are your thoughts like when you sit in meditation being mindful is observing your breath observing what thoughts will arrive getting to know yourself so it's all linked together. It's all one thing. Right. So what do you say to people then, Sabina, who say, well, I, I don't want to come to your classes because I want to do mindfulness? Uh, I'm saying give it a try. If you hate it, you don't have to come back. <laughs> yeah, and I do say, like, it's pretty much the same thing. Yeah. Just a different word for the same thing. And, and it's, a, it's one of the other myths that around age in terms of uh, i can't do yoga because i'm too old oh gosh like i think that covers a uh, falls into that category you know that true yoga is accessible to anybody no matter what age fitness level you are what ailments you have absolutely anyone can do it and again there is adaptations for absolutely everyone there's no limits honestly <laughs> and obviously you don't need loads of equipment either do you no no you may do even if you don't have a mat at the home at home if you have a carpet it's fine to do it on the carpet it might be a little bit loose so you might be a little bit more careful when you're um you know uh, when you do you know, like white stands and stuff so just see how your carpet works for you but uh, or you if you have a towel as well that works too, like a large towel that's a little bit less slippery. You can honestly do it anywhere. Yeah. You might need a little bit of cushioning on your knees. That's all you need. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that sort of links beautifully to obviously the challenges you've had, Sabina, and 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 you did a lovely short video for the my winning through group a few weeks ago, but that's mm -hmm. when you just started taking your classes online. Um, so do you want to share that journey you've been through, Sabina, from um, realising 
you would have no income if you didn't mm. to where you are now and maybe where that's going to lead to in the future. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up, actually. That is quite a funny um, story. So I always wanted to do online classes or do recording of my class for my students because they're always like, oh, you know, when you go away, we meet straight from the practice and we would like somebody to talk us through it and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll do it one day. But I have like a terrible fear of being in front of the camera. And it's like, even just little short videos, they just make me feel so anxious. So that's what was stopping me. And when this whole thing started, I was basically just forced to do it. And like, the funny thing is, I didn't even think twice. I'm like, this is what I'm doing. That's it. I'm like, oh no, you know, oh, but I'm, I'm scared in front of them. No, I'm like, I'm doing this. <laughs> so I got a uh, mic and I got the um, first, well, it wasn't the professional first. I just like had a little chair, put my laptop on it <laughs> uh, without thinking about the lighting or anything like that. You know, I'm like, okay, let's do this. Got Zoom um, and started doing the class. And of course, problems came up. So it was about tweaking the problems every week. And now I think my setup is pretty good. I got some lights as well because like, you know, my lighting was quite dark. So people couldn't see me all that well. I had to do that. And um, I got a higher stand as well. So it's in the same level with me so people can actually see my whole body. <laughs> so a little tweaks like that. And the microphone was a massive thing because uh, especially um, when I do the deep relaxation, my voice goes a little bit softer. And unless I was really like right in front of me, right in front of my computer, people couldn't hear me clearly. So that made a huge difference. Again, it's a learning curve. And also, you know, we um, we love the perfection of things. Like right? we have the idea of like everything needs to be perfect. It doesn't. Life isn't perfect. Okay, you just do it and figure it out along the way. That's the best way I find. Because things will pop up, you learn, you change, you adapt. And that's the best way really. Don't be scared starting something because like, oh, you have an idea in your head how it should be. It will never be like that anyway. <laughs> no, so just do it yeah. and just change when you adapt when you need to. And what sort of feedback are you getting from your classes now you're online oh, Sabina. people are actually loving it that it's something in their routine they they were doing before this whole thing the lockdown happened and they are so happy that they can carry on with some some kind of normality you know plus they can connect with us we always have a little chat before the class and after the class as well which is amazing we are social creatures we need human connection and as much as we love our families, you know, we want to connect with others as well. <laughs> and some people are in this lockdown on their own as well, which I think is really damaging for mental well-being. We are social creatures, we need it. So this is really amazing for them that they can connect at least through the screen and do something together. And they, a lot of people said that it's helped them cope so much. So I tried to adapt to classes. So I, slip and coping techniques and easy ones which people can do you know which take five minutes like five minutes breathing but it will bring you to this uh, calm state which leads to healthy immunity healthy body when we are in constantly in the fight and flight mode our immunity system shuts down everything shuts down you don't want that to happen right now when there's a crazy virus going around you want to strengthen your immunity and you do that by relaxation. When your body is in the state of relaxation, it just heals, it, your natural healing capabilities kick in. And yes, you will be, even if you do get something, you'll be more likely to, you know, come out of it healthy again. Yeah, absolutely. So obviously before you were very restricted in terms of uh, what you could do because, um, your work was all very local but now the yes. world's your oyster isn't it yes <laughs> so what, yes, what are you doing to encourage uh, wider reach even global reach 
Yeah, um, yeah, I know. I, I've been trying. Actually, some of my students, which have moved away, can now join the class, which is great. Um, so distancing is not an issue. And I've been posting on Facebook to get a wider reach. I also asked all my yogis, uh, you know, my customers, to share it with their friends if they would be interested. And Instagram as well is fab way to connect. To be honest, I've never done paid advertising. It was just word of mouth or just local Facebook groups, buy and sell groups as well. You can spread the word there. Um, yeah, but ask friends. So it's usually best. Somebody who's been into your class already and knows you know that it works. And yeah, when they recommend, of course, it's, yeah. it's better. Well, we're, um, at the end, we'll, we'll get you to share how people can contact you, uh, Sabina. But if you could um, sort of summarize how yoga and meditation, how important they are in this whole um, crazy environment we're in, how would you describe that? I think they give you amazing tool to cope with everything, to calm down and actually learn about your triggers. I think, as you said, if you can't go out, go in. I've been doing that. It's an amazing time now because you get triggered. A lot, a lot of emotions are rising up. And now is the time to actually reflect on those. Where are they coming from? And to heal. Uh, we've been doing amazing thing with my friend Cheryl. We're doing these, uh, started doing these lives on Facebook and we call it No Filter. And we talk about what's been going on for us, what emotions are, and how we're coping with that. To share it with, with others as well. You know, somebody might hear it and like, oh, actually, I'm going to try that. And what we've um, been doing, it's quite powerful and so simple. You can give yourself the time when you are feeling anxious or whatever you emotional you're feeling, give yourself the time to sit with it. To actually sit with it, let not resist it. Oh, I want to feel better. I want to do this. I don't want to feel like that. But actually, let it in. Drop your barriers and let it in, and feel it. And yes, it's uncomfortable. So you need to be brave and and courageous to sit with that uncomfortableness. You might cry, you might scream with anger. Just let it flow through your body, and you'd be surprised how fast it shifts. So this when is actually, all about letting out the emotions. Yes, process them, actually. Just let them flow through your body. If you resist them, you're locking it inside. Now, you see, and it, that's, that's all very well and good for you, Sabina, but us blokes, we don't do things like that. So <laughs> that, that's, probably, that's probably another myth, isn't it? That's another myth, yeah. So what would <laughs> Have your, you tried? What would your take on that be, um, Sabina, um, because I, I know say, the give it a go. women to men doing yoga is probably, well, what mm -hmm. is the ratio? You tell me. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, I have about two, three men in my classes, sometimes less, you know, the rest is women, which is just a shame because if you think about it, all the yogis from India are male. Yes, I know. <laughs> it's a contradiction, isn't it? So it's, it's, it's not, it's, it's not a female thing. <laughs> it's definitely for men as well. And Actually, with the men being um, so out of touch with their feelings, actually, it's not, they are not out of touch with their feelings. They just don't know how to express them. I think it's just because preconditioning, the way we were brought up. You know, when you're, uh, oh, you're a boy, you shouldn't cry. Boys don't cry. Men up. Things like that. It's terribly damaging. Don't do that to your kid. And this is why you, you guys learn how to suppress your feelings and don't know how to process them because you haven't got the tools you were taught from a very young age not to do it um so it's it's a it's, it's like not a, a macho thing habit to do. yeah yes so what, just... what would your advice to men be uh, then sabina well get rid of that those beliefs and work on yourself and try to change that <laughs> every time you get yourself you know well I, this is not what men do what who made the rules? Who said this is how sh women should behave and this is how men should behave? No, it's, it's just... interesting because um, when, when, um, uh, when my wife and I talk to other people about us doing yoga, it's very noticeable that the, the men 
give you a sort of a strange look thinking why why am i doing yoga you know it's yeah. quite acceptable for my wife to be doing it so there clearly is a um some sort of, sort of mindset thing around mm -hmm. it isn't it but i think it's changing nowadays like more and more men do yoga and are very much into you know the mindfulness and spirituality and being actually learning about their masculine healthy masculinity you well, know. you just mentioned a word that I was going to touch on, but I wanted you to say it first, because <laughs> that's, a, that's another thing about yoga, isn't it? Um, I mean, I don't really sort of think of myself as a particularly spiritual person, but I don't know, maybe I am. Um, but, but that's another thing that puts um, people off yoga, doesn't it? I see you got your lovely cat there. <laughs> yes, she always joins in at everything. <laughs> Star of the show. She's so funny. She joins uh, into what, the class. What, it's hilarious. Yes, what spirituality. What would you say to people who are frightened of doing yoga because they think it's too spiritual or whatever? Too hippy dippy. Yeah, I had yeah. like again, it's whatever works for you. You know, for me, I was a hardcore atheist before, and now I'm like open to everything. <laughs> and um, you still get the benefits if you don't believe into spirituality. You can be atheist and everything. Just focus on the physical part you will still get the benefit and you can just filter that out and you will still get an amazing benefit um but again like if you drop your worries a little bit and open your mind a little bit and see you might find and learn something new yeah well again, you don't I... have to be religious or anything to do yoga just I, have an I open think mind what you just said there sabina beautifully encapsulates where everybody is in the current situation um i was on a coaching um, a virtual coaching uh retreat yesterday uh, and one of the things that came across to me really really strongly and i said it at the end is this fact about people having to think differently at the moment and mm. so by embracing um you know yoga and meditation if people haven't done it before, then, you know, I, I, I'm seeing firsthand the benefits myself. And, uh, you know, I thank you profusely because you're a wonderful uh, teacher. And oh, thank you. Helping keep my wife on the straight and narrow. So how do people find you, Savina? First of all, I want to say, don't thank me. Thank my teachers. That's their work, you know. <laughs> they taught me what I know. <laughs> ah, yes, but you've got to interpret that. So people can find me and um, my company is called True Drew Yoga, T-R-U-D-R-U -R -R Yoga. And you can find me on Facebook and Instagram. Um, if you go to truedrewyoga.co.uk slash London, that is my page. Okay. And well, from there you can find all the other links as well. When when we get the video up on the on the group, if you can um, put uh, all those oh, details um in the response box that'd be great but um finally i mean i i, I don't want to leave on a negative so maybe we can turn this <laughs> to positive but i know you're planning your first ever yoga retreat this summer um yes so everything crossed it, it goes ahead maybe you just want to share that quickly <laughs> fingers crossed that it will go ahead it's in august so I'm hoping that this will be open because people will need it so desperately by then. Seriously, it's going to be a beautiful five-day yoga, meditation, and walking retreat in gorgeous Welsh nature. We like we found this place called Trigonos, and it's just so beautiful. The nature is stunning there. This they is do beautiful Snowdonia. food. Snowdonia. In yeah. Wales, yeah. So we're going to do guided walks as well, lots of yoga. We're going to do gong baths as well. And lots of different therapies as well. So additional things that you can book on top of all the wonderful activities which will be included as well. So do you have a plan B just in case? <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> we just have to postpone it. If um, if it doesn't happen, we would have to postpone it. Well, we we keep that positive intent going, Sabina. Positive intent. Fingers yeah. crossed. Toes and, crossed. Um, everything crossed. <laughs> I mean, it's. It, it's still four months away, isn't it? Yes. So it will be fine. So yeah. it out there to the universe, please. <laughs> Anything is possible. 
Anyway, it's been absolutely delightful um, uh, having this interview with you, Sabina, and uh, wish you every success with uh, your business in these challenging times. And uh, I can heartily recommend Sabina and uh, her classes online, offline, whatever. Um, and let's hope you can uh, get that retreat off the ground in the summer. So thanks thank you. Thank so much. you so much. Thank you so much, Stu. It's been a pleasure. No, thank you. <laughs> Take care. Have a great day. Bye.